especially as a child of Holocaust survivors. I was horrified to see Speaker Pelosi, Leader Hoyer, defend Representative Omar after her vicious anti-Semitic remarks and, pre and presidential- and The gentleman's time has expired, Ms. Owens. That was unfair. It was not unfair. You had plenty of extra time, Ms. No, Owens. No, I did not. Called out in Congress, anti-Semitic Democrats, Islam, Beta O'Rourke, and media lies about Trump. In the House Judiciary Committee hearing on hate crimes and the rise of white nationalism on April 9, 2019, some of the witnesses focused on some kinds of racism and bigotry and not others, flat out ignoring others, or even calling on the government to stop looking at some. We also see an FBI diverting resources to investigate so-called black identity extremism, all at the expense of combating real hate. The FBI should abandon its black identity extremist designation. These witnesses call for more censorship from social media and for more efforts by the government to combat what they call hate, hate crimes, and hate speech. And as anyone who pays attention to the culture war knows, their definition of hate, hate crimes, and hate speech are inevitably going to be biased, partisan, and hypocritical. In the hearing, for example, Representative Gomer from Texas, a Republican, called out witness Neil Potts, who is the public director for Facebook, for bias on Facebook and Instagram, which Facebook owns and operates. And let me tell you what, Mr. Potts, uh, and I certainly appreciate your noble service to our country. Uh, Facebook owns Instagram, correct? Uh, thank you, uh, Congressman. Yes, Facebook does own Instagram. Yeah, and do they have the same, does Instagram have the same standards as Facebook? For the most part, we apply our community standards across Instagram, too. There are certain things where there are differences, but uh, for the most part, the community standards apply as well. well I'm told that I can have this screenshot at the back. Um, report as violence or threat of violence, and it talks about photos, videos, extreme graphic nature. And there's a second screenshot, if I can see that. Um, here you have someone that's calling, we crush the United States under our feet, et cetera. That was reported, and within a minute, uh, the report came back from Instagram. Uh, that there's no problem here. Basically, these aren't the drones you're looking for. Just move on. Uh, so I'm really curious, if you're going to enforce these standards, why are they so quickly enforced uh, and erroneously enforced against people like my friends Diamond and Silk? Uh, that I asked them uh, recently when I saw them, uh, are you still having trouble with Facebook? And they said, now, Anytime we say something nice about Donald Trump, we spend forever just trying to prove that we're not a Russian robot and uh, that they send us through all kinds of things just to keep using the service. And here you have people that, uh, as a result of their misunderstanding of their own religion, they want to crush the United States. They think of us as the big Satan, Israel as the little Satan. Uh, and I would just encourage you to take a look at that and, and why someone who wants to destroy the United States and kill everyone in this room uh, gets a pass when uh, others don't. So I would welcome any explanation you can find for that. Thank you, Congressman. I'm, I'm not familiar with that exact example. I'm well, happy. I know it just happened. Uh, happy and happy to get that back to my team to make sure that we look and review that. Thank you. Any calls of violence that target people based off of their nationality, their ethnicity. Well, I know what it's, religion, way it's we, supposed we would, to be. We would, we would remove it. I just, unfortunately, am not familiar uh, with, with that case, but that does go against our principles. Which, as anyone in the know knows, is utter bullshit. There is a clear and pervasive pattern of bias, as I and many others have demonstrated. It's really no secret at all for many of us. It's just, it's kind of common knowledge at this point. Very few people are stupid enough to deny it, but mm, some people defend it. You may have seen in previous videos that I've demonstrated that one can say some blatantly anti-white racist things, some blatantly anti-male sexist things, and some things that are blatantly anti-cisgender. Cisgender means, you know, not transgender. And anti-heterosexual things. You can get away with all these things, but of course bigotry from the other direction, you can't get away with. Now, personally, I'm against censorship of all kinds. I'm against hate of any kind, but I'm against censorship of all kinds. Anyway. Many of you have no doubt noticed the stark naked bias that demands that Islam and Muslims not be criticized, though its scripture is extremely sexist, violent, anti-intellectual, 
pro-slavery and so on, to the point where now a Muslim congresswoman, who is at least accused by the Republicans of being anti-Semitic and who no doubt really, in the very least, skirts with anti-Semitism, is not at all criticized, even praised in some cases, by the Democrats. And the bias in which it's politically incorrect to say that there are high levels of anti-Semitism among Muslims, both worldwide and in America. In fact, I've been suspended from Facebook and shunned in real life by real life friends for simply quoting certain parts of the Quran. You know, because apparently it's the messenger who's pointing out hate that's the hateful one rather than, you know, the source of hate itself. It is refreshing then to see someone speak out about these things. Witness Mort Klein wasn't having it. Mort Klein is the national president for the Zionist Organization for America. If you don't know, there are two senses of that word Zionism. I mean, for people like Klein, Zionism is the movement for Jews to establish and maintain a homeland, you know, Israel, and for others, Zionism is a sinister hand bringing plot amongst the Jews to take over the world. Ha ha ha. No doubt, anti-Semitic Muslims and genuine alt-right and neo-Nazi types, as rare as they are in reality, are united in thinking that Klein is the latter kind of Zionist. Of course, that's what they think. Remember the anti-Jew alliance between the real Nazis and Muslim organizations such as predecessors of the group the Muslim Brotherhood, you know, the beloved group that uh, Obama loved so much, the Muslim Brotherhood, Islamist terrorists. As we did with Candace Owens in a previous video, in this one we're going to show you what Klein had to say, because, you know, the whole hearing was over three and a half hours long, and we're going to add a little bit from others where context is needed. Here we go. Thank you, Mr. Klein. Thank you, Chairman Nadler, Ranking Member Collins, uh, members of the committee. Uh, first of all, I must say I have Tourette syndrome. Sometimes I uh, have tics and make sounds I can't control. So please forgive me. <laughs> For the past 25 years, I've served as president of the oldest pro Israel organization, the Zionist Organization of America. Uh, we promote strong U.S. Israel relations and work to protect American Jews and others from anti Semitism and violence. As a child of Holocaust survivors, I personally felt the horrors of unbridled anti-Semitism. I was born in the DP camp in Germany, grew up without the loving presence of most of my grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins, whom the Nazis murdered. <laughs> A front page article in the New York Times Friday headlines, bias is shared by extremes of the right, left, and Islam. We should keep that in mind. <laughs> the Tree of Life Synagogue murderer was a neo-Nazi who hated white President Trump for not being anti-Semitic, called Jews in the Trump administration a kike infestation. The New Zealand mosque murderer was a, actually a left-wing, self-described eco-fascist who also published a manifesto praising communist China as the, quote, nation with the closest political and social values to my own. <laughs> Most of us correctly treat neo-Nazis and white supremacists as horrifying. History reminds us that we cannot write neo-Nazism off as a marginal phenomenon. There's a plethora of sickening neo-Nazi white supremacist internet sites fomenting hatred and violence primarily against Jews and blacks, but also against LGBTQ, women, feminists, and Muslims. We need to determine who is funding and is behind this. <laughs> the FBI reports, reports that Jews are the victims of 60% of the religious motivated hate crimes in America. Jew hatred is the canary in the coal mine. It's unfortunately incumbent upon us to speak about the major issue threatening violence against Jews and all Americans, which is Muslim anti-Semitism, which is strengthened by significant institutional support and the support of imams and is becoming mainstream. Let's look at college campuses. During the decades that ZOA has been combating campus anti-Semitism, we've never received a single complaint by anti-Semitic discrimination, harassment, or intimidation perpetrated by neo-Nazis or white supremacists. By contrast, we receive hundreds of calls from students about anti-Semitic harassment, discrimination, and intimidation perpetrated by the left-wing, significantly Muslim hate group, Students for Justice in Palestine, SJP, and its allies. COA's letter to city... <laughs> Zuway's letter to City University, we have documented that at these SJP rallies, it is common for SJP demonstrators calling for Israel's elimination, screaming Jews out of their campuses, Jews are racist sons of bitches, forgive me, 
When we take control of this campus, we're going to kick you out and make sure you don't graduate. Get out of America. Long live the Intifada. Last week at Columbia University, the anti-Semitic hate group SJP distributed a flyer for its apartheid week with a caricature of a Jew that looks like it came from the Nazis' propagandist tabloid, Der Sturmer. Mm -hmm. The Amcha Initiative database of almost 2,600 incidents confirms SJP and its allies are the perpetrators in most incidents on U.S. campuses. Unfortunately, that porn incidents perpetrated by Muslim and leftist campus groups are rarely satisfactorily resolved. Let's look at the statistics. ADL's worldwide survey of 100 countries found that 49% of Muslims harbor anti-Semitic attitudes. This is a chart of that. You see the non-Muslims, it's far less. This is a painful fact uh, that ADL uh, has studied. <laughs> it's more than double the anti-Semitism found among persons of other faiths. ADL data also shows the U in the U.S., 34% of Muslims, according to ADL, exhibit a high degree of anti-Semitism versus 14% of the general population. The 16 countries and the territories having the highest level of anti-Semitism were all in the Muslim Middle East. Levels of anti-Semitism there ranged from 74 to 93%. Uh, in a recent conference on anti-Semitism, a speaker said, 20 years ago, the major problem was anti-Semitism of the far right, but it flipped. Now it's the left and radical Muslims. <laughs> We're in danger of seeing it spread uh, to the Middle East and to Europe. <laughs> the danger and problem is there is institutional support for violence by leading imams. Al-Azhar University, which is the West Point of Islamic academia, trains imams who fan out all over the world. A highly influential treatise by the former Grand Mufti Tantawi said, quote, Gentle persuasion can do no good with Jews, so use force with them. Treat them in the way you see as effective in ridding them of, the, of their evil. At Al-Azhar Friday sermons, they've recited hadiths saying, we have to commit genocide against the Jews in order to usher in the messianic day of judgment. During the past year and a half, <laughs> in mosques in North Carolina, New Jersey, California, Texas, Pennsylvania, imams have made the same speeches about genocide against the Jews. Can you imagine if rabbis called to murder Christians or priests were called to murder Muslims? We've demanded they should be fired. They weren't. <laughs> Wayne Hurst Ali, a well-known Somali former Muslim, said, I confess that if you're a Jewish, I want to apologize to you. When my half-sister showed me holy Quranic verses to support her hatred of Jews, I feared arguing with Allah for Allah would burn me. I also hated Jews. I'm ashamed of my prejudice against you in the past. <laughs> As Egyptian President Sisi said in a speech at Al-Azhar University, we need a, 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 a religious revolution. You imams are responsible for Allah. The entire world is waiting. <laughs> Let's speak frankly. We want to stop hate and stop institutions from supporting condoning it. I don't know how much time I have. You're, you're, you're 48 seconds over. Well, but I was stopped. I, I was stopped with, with the outburst. The outburst. Go ahead. For another 30 seconds. I have something uh, very, very important to say. <laughs> Especially as a child of Holocaust survivors. I was horrified to see Speaker Pelosi, Leader Hoyer, defend Representative Omar after her vicious anti Semitic remarks and, pre and presidential. And the gentleman's time has expired, Ms. Owens. That was unfair. It was not unfair. You had plenty of extra time, Ms. No, Owens. No, I did not. Notice, by the way, that the chairman said that he had 30 seconds, and then he cut him off with the gavel at about 14 seconds. Gee, I wonder why. Could it be that he was calling out the chairman's party? Don't worry, though, folks. He'll get his revenge later on. Mr. Klein, um, when you were giving your opening statement, uh, uh, you got interrupted. I'd like to... What were you going to say? And I'm not blaming the chair because it was over time. There were several witnesses that did that, and I, I get it. It's tough being chair sometimes. But what, what were you going to say? What was your point? I was going to make two. two if you could turn the mic on there. Oh, I'm sorry. That's Thank right. you. I was going to make two important points that it was very painful to me that in light of the vicious anti-Semitic remarks made by Representative Omar and others, that no one in that party, many in that party defended her, saying she's not an anti-Semite. <laughs> Uh, and there was no consequences. She was not thrown off of any committee as Stephen King was for his uh, outrageous remarks. Uh, and I was going to simply end by saying we need to investigate the Students for Justice in Palestine and BDS terror connections. We need to demand university leaders, very important, condemn SJP hate groups by name. They won't condemn them by name. They just say we're against anti-Semitism. Uh, we must demand colleges must ex suspend and expel students who would commit these terrible uh, 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 actions against uh, Jewish people. Uh, 
and that Title VI should be invoked and they should lose federal funding if they don't do the right thing when it comes to the anti-Semitic bigotry. And finally, uh, we should be having consequences for members of Congress who make hateful and outrageous comments against blacks, Muslims, or Jews. And uh, when it comes to Jews, we have not seen that. So Were, are there any, uh, <laughs> you mentioned members of Congress. Um, there's a former member of Congress, I understand, that made a comment about uh, <laughs> Prime Minister Netanyahu uh, <laughs> recently. Um, are, are you familiar with that? And what, what is your understanding and what's your concern about that comment? Well, that was Beto uh, uh, O'Rourke, who uh, I believe you're referring to, who, who uh, called Benjamin Netanyahu a racist. Uh, nothing could, could be more absurd than that. He was involved in helping uh, Ethiopian Jews, black Jews, come to, uh, uh, to Israel. Uh, he's actually had the, uh, the most uh, positive uh, policies toward the uh, Israeli Arabs of any prime minister we've ever had. <laughs> uh, so this is a ridiculous statement. Also, I might add, Benjamin Netanyahu has not built a single new community in Judea and Samaria since he's been prime minister, none. So it's not like he's even building all over the place, which is attributed to him uh, regularly. So this comment was uh, just really uh, outrageous and despicable. And I think it should uh, almost disqualify him for a higher office. And by him, you're referring to who? Beta O'Rourke. Okay. Thank you very much. I, uh, <laughs> my time's expired. I want to ask Mr. Klein, what are your thoughts about President Trump's remarks regarding the Charlottesville demonstration uh, where he's quoted as saying, you also had some very fine people on both sides? Well, I'm glad you asked that because the media has really completely distorted uh, the truth of that episode. Uh, what he meant, and he said so when he said it, is that they're fine people who want to get rid of Robert E. Lee's statue, and they're fine people who are not haters who believe for historical reasons they want to keep that statue. And he made that clear. And then in the same breath, Mr. Gomer, in the same breath, President Trump said, quote, I'm not talking about the neo-Nazis and the white nationalists when I say fine people, because they should be condemned totally. And yet the media has never made that clear, that he, in that, in that statement, he condemned neo-Nazis and white nationalists. He did not mean that they were fine people. Quite the contrary. He's disgusted by those people. Thank you. And, you know, I look forward to the day when Martin Luther King Jr.'s dream is a reality where we judge people by the content of their character, not the color of their skin. But I'm amazed how many times when there's an objection to something someone says that uh, if the person making the objectionable comment happens to be black or Jewish, then you're a racist or your anti-Semite. And I've been uh, amazed, Mr. Klein, the Anti-Defamation League has called you, as I understand, a Jewish person to be anti-Jewish. Um, it's just interesting. Ms. Owens, Mr. Klein, you remember the chairman agreeing to give you an extra 30 seconds because of the interruption that you experienced during your opening statement. And then do you remember being gaveled down by the chairman once you began speaking of the anti-Semitic remarks by a member of Congress. <laughs> and we've just timed this. You, you only got 12 seconds. I have 30 seconds left. And so I'm going to give you those 30 seconds that uh, you were promised and were denied. Well, I am deeply pained that after a congresswoman from Minnesota called Israel evil, hypnotized the world, Israel's an apartheid state, uh, Jews used their money to uh, promote the, what they won out of Congress, that this woman was defended by leaders of her party, defended by at least three mem members of her party who were running for president uh, with no consequence. She should have been removed from all of her committees just the way Stephen King was for this uh, unbelievable outburst of hatred uh, toward, toward Jewish people. Uh, uh, in fact, there's actually a member of this very committee who publicly called uh, Jews termites of this committee, and th there was no consequence to that outrageous uh, statement. So th uh, this is really frightening to me, especially as a child of Holocaust survivors. If you're not, if there's not consequence to this type of hate speech against Jews, you're only going to get more of it. We're only going to embolden people to continue this, and ultimately, hate speech turns into physical violence. That's been true throughout Jewish history, and that really frightens me. The time of the gentleman has expired. So the first time I ever spoke on the floor of, uh, of the U.S. House, it was to condemn white nationalism and white supremacy. I'm, I'm very proud of this. I'm also very proud of the fact that <clears throat> earlier this year, when a member of my own conference of my own party made inexcusable remarks, 
Republican leadership acted very quickly and disciplined him. In fact, that member sits on zero committees right now. It's a shame that the same can't be said for my colleagues across the aisle. They continue to stand by and accept anti-Semitic remarks from a member of their own party. They couldn't even unite around a simple resolution to condemn anti-Semitism without watering it down. Last year, 11 Jewish worshipers were killed and six others were wounded at the Tree of Life Synagogue, which is just outside my district in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The day after that cowardly act, I stood in solidarity with Americans of all religions, of all races, of all ethnicities, at a vigil to honor the victims of that crime. We have to come together as a nation to stand up against hatred and bigotry in all forms, and all forms includes anti-Semitism. So Mr. Klein, what do you think Congress can do to combat the rise of anti-Semitism? <laughs> well, one of the initial things I agree with you, Congressman, is uh, uh, there should be consequences to members of Congress who make repeated anti-Semitic remarks that are false, in addition to being uh, insensitive. Uh, when there's no consequences, it only emboldens others to continue that. Uh, and uh, uh, also when it comes to campuses where there's been c constant uh, verbal violence against Jews, there's been no consequences. The universities refuse to publicly name those people who have uh, uh, made the, uh, these awful rallies and statements, and they've never dismissed them uh, from school expel them, but by the way, when these types of episodes occur against blacks or gays or Muslims, they are expelled frequently. That's common, as they should be. I'm not opposed to that. <laughs> so, uh, uh, and we should, understand, we should really study why is it that uh, one half of the world's Muslims have anti-Semitic views. This is a ADL's own survey. It's not my survey. Why are one third of American Muslims have anti-Semitic views? Is it a coincidence that two of the three freshmen who have made anti-Semitic remarks happen to be of that faith? We should have a study about that. And uh, uh, President Sisi, a Muslim leader of Egypt, has said that we need a religious revolution and imams must step up to the plate and start uh, 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 making it clear that Islam has got to stop interpreting uh, the Koran the in the way it does, which promotes hatred to all, all sorts of people, especially Jews. Thank you, Mr. Klein. Uh, you were speaking briefly about college campuses. Uh, I speak a lot of college campuses, and uh, there's a lot of talk about boycott, divestment, and sanction, or the BDS movement. Um, in your opinion, is this fueling the anti-Semitism on college campuses, and if so, to what extent? Yes, BDS is an anti-Semitic movement to, whose goal, its leaders say openly, is to destroy Israel, to boycott, divest, and sanction. <laughs> uh, fortunately, uh, university presidents has not allowed anything to happen with that in, 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 specifically, but resolutions are passed regularly on this. Uh, there's rallies about this, really demonizing Jewish people and demonizing the Jewish state of Israel. We really need strong federal laws that uh, make it clear that American governmental uh, bodies will not do business with any organization or company that supports BDS. They can say whatever they want. It's not a freedom of speech issue. They can condemn Israel and Jews, but, but the U.S. government will not do business with them. That's really what, what, what has to happen because the, the ultimate goal of BDS is, is Israel's destruction. And these people, by the way, never condemn the Palestinian Authority, never condemn other outrageous uh, entities that promote hatred. The Palestinian Authority pays Arabs to murder Jews. They name school streets and sports teams after Jew killers. They incite hatred against Jews in their schools, in their media, in their sermons and speeches, and you never see these BDS people condemning this really vicious human rights abusing entity, making it clear this is all about Jews, it's all about anti-Semitism. Uh, Mr. Klein, is there anything that you would like to respond to that's been said? I will give you the remainder of my time. <laughs> I, I'm really confused when uh, the, the good doctor says that Islam does not uh, teach hatred of Jews. There's no problems with that issue. <laughs> when in fact, there's a dozen or more imams in, in states around the country who have publicly made sermons calling uh, to murder Jews. This is a hadith 
that's, that's related to the Koran, that's considered very holy. The leaders uh, of, of, the, of, the, of the Muslim world from Al-Azhar University have made vile statements against Jewish people. <laughs> and uh, uh, we really need to have Muslims step up and do what, what the President Sisi says. And there has to be a, a, a reformation and a rethinking of, of, uh, of the, the, the aspects of the Koran that promote hatred against Jews. Uh, that's why you have constant uh, m murder of Jews in Israel, uh, despite the fact that Israel has offered a state to the uh, Palestinian Authority four times in the last 20 years. <laughs> so this is, uh, to me, uh, one of the most serious issues as to why are, are half the world's Muslims anti-Semitic? Why are 75 to 95 percent of the Muslims in the Middle East anti-Semitic? Why are one third of Muslims in America anti-Semitic, which, which is two to five times the rate of anti-Semitism of any other group? This has to be explored. But people are afraid to because then they're called an Islamophobe. And this has nothing to do with Islamophobia. This has to be, do with the truth, with data that ADL themselves has, has, has uh, put forth, surveys have put forth. Pew has also put forth similar data. Why is this an issue? We have to talk about uh, this Muslim anti-Semitism uh, because uh, uh, this is endangering Jews really uh, in America and throughout the world. God forbid this will be tra translated into physical violence even greater than we're seeing today. There you go, folks. The entire three and a half hour long hearing is available on our BitChute channel. Scroll down, see the link below. I also have other shorter videos highlighting different aspects of this hearing. See the links below for those too. Thank you very much for watching. Peace for the peaceful, tough love, equality of opportunity, not of outcome, and liberty for those who respect the freedom of others.